And thank you everybody for attending today's FDOT uh, webinar series on surface creation and editing. All right, so our topics for today are, is we're gonna be again, be using the FDOT Civil 3D 2017 state kit. And we're gonna be talking about a number of tools. We're gonna be talking about the FDOT Land XML Grouper tool and also the Autodesk Civil Engineering Data Translator because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be working with surface data from two different sources, okay? So we're gonna be creating a surface and then we're gonna be using some of these editing surface tools. We may not use all these tools, but I'm gonna to try to hit as many of them as I can in the next 55 to 60 minutes. The FDOT LAN XML grouper tool can be found either from your desktop in the FDOT 2017.c3d folder, okay? Or when you have Civil 3D started using the FDOT icon, uh, you can go to the FDOT tab on the ribbon, and you can go to the tools panel and you can pick on the land XML grouper tool. And we're gonna be using this tool when we're working with some data that we've gotten from Casey that's been pushed out as a uh, land XML file. Now, when we open up that file in the grouper tool, it's gonna to look something like this. We'll go through the steps here in just a bit. All right, then we're gonna be talking about the Autodesk Civil 3D Engineering Data Translator tool. Now, this tool does not come in the box. And in a couple of slides, I'll show you where you can go get the tool from. Now, when it's been, when you've got it and you've installed it, you go to your tool space, you go to the toolbox tab, and you pick on the AutoCAD Civil 3D 2017 V1 Enhancement section, expand it out, and then you pick on the import Bentley Geopack project data because this one of the two projects we're going to be working with today was an old Casey project. And then also the second project we're going to be working on is a project that was actually an old MicroStation project and we were lucky enough to be able to get some tin files that we're going to convert. Now, when we run that tool, it's asking us to find a tin file, right? It then asks us what units we want it to be in. And then it reads the file and it gives us a list of things that we can import. And so for our example today, we're gonna to bring in contours and triangles, okay? Now what it does is it pushes this up to the cloud. Now when you start this tool, it's gonna to ask you to log on to your account. If you don't have an account, you can create one, it's free. And then it gives you access to put this data up to the cloud. Once it's been pushed to the cloud, you have to open up this tool called the job monitor and then you're waiting for it to, to finish the translation. When it's done, the status that says in progress changes to complete, and then you pick on download, and then you download the files. And we'll look at what it downloads here in just a bit. Now, if you don't have this tool, whoever in your organization, who is the CAD manager, who manages your subscription slash maintenance account with Autodesk, uh, would have to log into that account. Okay. They would have to then go to their to the Civil 3D section in that account, expand it out, and they would have to go down and they would have to pick on the updates and add-ons link. When they get to there, they'll find the tool and they'll just download it and install it, and that's how it will show up inside of your Civil 3D. So they have to go get this tool to be able to use it. All right. Now, in today's examples, we're going to be working with two projects, this 43343, State Road 57, and we're going to be using the Land XMO Grouper tool. We're going to be, you know, uh, we will have a survey database that I've already created. Uh, we're going to create this SurfRD file, and then we're going to bring this data from the grouper into that survey database, and then we're going to push the data, both the survey points and the survey chains in there to create the surface. And then we're going to do a little bit of editing, and then we're going to create the GDTMRD file, which is a process that we have to do with, within the FDOT. So today we're going to, again, we're going to be focused on, focusing in on the FDOT workflow. Okay, the other project is going to be the 220495 State Road 61, and we're going to be using the Autodesk Data Translator tool for this one. Now, we actually have two surfaces, and depending upon the amount of time that we have, we may do both, we may only do one, but I've already got them pre-built so we can use them in the last example. Because what we're gonna do is we're going to open up a drainage file, and if you attended Brian's sessions the last couple ones, we're working with a data set out of a drainage project. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take four of the surfaces out of that project, and we're gonna paste them together and look at some of the pitfalls in doing that. And then we're gonna look at possibly doing some, analyzing some of those surfaces by either doing an, uh, an elevation banding or by doing a, and creating maybe a surface style so we can do contours and slope barrels. So when we create a surface in Civil 3D, 
it compromises of both points, break lines, and boundaries, and possibly contours. So we have different ways that we can bring data to create a surface into to Civil 3D. Okay, now in the FDOT workflows, we're usually going to be bringing data in that they've collected out in the field that we've run through the grouper. In commercial, you're going to be bringing in, and most likely, either you have drawings that have existing contours or you have ASCII text files that you can bring in to your drawing and then use those point groups to create a surface from. Now, AutoCAD supports, Civil 3D supports several types of surfaces. A tin surface, which is what we're going to work with today, uh, a grid surface, there's basically points that lie on a rectangular grid. Usually that's when we're bringing in data from a digital elevation model. A 10 volume surface is where we compare two surfaces that we've already created, and it gives us the volume between the two surfaces. We can also do a grid volume surface. And then we can also extract out of a corridor model surfaces, and then we can use those. Right? So those are really the five types that we really work with. Now, a surface comprises the triangles that form up a triangulated irregular network. All right, these 10 lines form the triangles that make up the surface triangulation, okay? So that's what we're gonna be building today is a 10. Now, near the bottom here, we talk about break line data, okay? And that's another thing that when we, the data is collected out in the field, we're gonna add break lines, could be, you know, be, could be edge of pavement, back of curb, you know, all kinds of different types of things that we collect out in the field. And we're gonna use that to break up our surface and get the proper elevation information in there. So we'll be working with that, okay? Now, some of the tools that could be used when you're editing a surface, all right? If you simply go to, if you've created a surface and you go to the tool space into the prospector tab and you expand out your surfaces and then you expand out the definition section of a surface and right click on edits, you've got all these tools, add lines, delete lines, add points, modify points, okay? Paste surface, simplify surfaces. You can also select a surface and then from the ribbon, because we have these context sensitive ribbons, you know, in Civil 3D, it puts a tab that says maybe 10 surface and the name of the surface. And then we have, you know, like the modify panel where we can do, modify the surface properties. The modify panel where we can add data, boundaries and break lines or contours. We have the edit surface information, or not edit surface, the way is the edit surface where we can add line, delete lines, and do a lot of different editing type of functions on the surface. Okay. Now in the analyze panel, if we pick on the analyze panel name, we can let the software check for contour problems. Uh, we have the water drop test. Uh, we have the resolving crossing break lines, which we'll do today. Uh, in the surface tools panel, we have things like we can extract data out from a surface where, as we all know, a surface is a model in Civil 3D. And when you select on it and you've got the surface displayed by contours, you know, we can't edit the contours individually. And a lot of times people like to extract that information out and manipulate it and then recreate the surface from it. So you can actually extract the objects out of there, like the boundary and the major and the minor uh, lines, and then use those and edit those and then rebuild the surface from those. So we just have a number of different tools that we can do. So let's get started here. All right, so we've got Civil 3D 2017 open. All right, we are opened it up using the state toolkit. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do before I start creating any drawings is that I wanna go down here and I wanna make sure that my data shortcut path is, is set up correctly. So I've already got the working folder set up where things are being stored. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna pick on set the data shortcuts project folder. So I have in my folder where I'm keeping my projects, I've got two projects right now. All right, I'm gonna pick on the 433301 and change project. So that's now gonna be my active project. Now, the next step here is, is that before I get into the landing some grouper, I'm gonna to go to the FDOT tab. I'm gonna go and create a file, all right? I'm gonna make sure that I have the right Project selected. Now, this is something that's changed in 2017 from prior releases. Is that Autodesk now is using a different directory instead of Civil 3D projects? Now it's Civil 3D 2017 projects is the default. So I'm going to pick on it. I'm going to pick on my folder. Hit OK. All right. The discipline is roadway. The file group is going to be survey design files. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a survey development model file. Now, you'll notice that the, it is now ServRD01. That means that in this survey folder, okay, under this project, I don't have this file created yet. I'm going to go ahead and set my coordinate system. This project is in the north part of the state. I'm going to create and open the file. I'm going to hit close. All right. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on data shortcuts and I'm going to associate the project to the current drawing. 
So here's my folder, here's my project, I hit OK, and you'll notice it up here at the top, to the right of your name, in brackets, you've got the actual project, and that will tell you that your drawing has been associated to a project, and, and that just helps the, the drawing know where to go look for the data shortcuts that we may be creating. All right, now, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to the FDOT tab. And we're going to go over to the tools panel and we're going to pick on the land xml grouper tool because we're just going to start it while we're inside of civil 3d now first thing i have to do is i have to go out and i have to find the file so in my project under the survey folder i have a folder called casey and in here i have an xml file that was exported out of the casey old casey application so i'm going to open that up now the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that i've got some data in here so i'm going to first pick on survey points and it lists all the survey points. And one of the things that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a quick look under the zone column. And I'm gonna scroll down and you'll notice that I don't have anything set in the zone column, okay? I'm gonna go pick on survey chains and there's my survey chain name, there's some zone information, there's my codes, here's my attributes, whether it's a feature or whether it's ground, and here's all the points that make up that chain. Now, for today's example, I'm only gonna concern myself with the GD TMRD chains and the GD TMRD points. So I'm gonna pick on chains. So it's looking, when it creates a filter, it's looking for zone one and zone two, and it's looking to match the ground attribute, okay? So we know that that's correct, okay? I'm gonna pick on points. When I go down and pick on GD TMRD points, you can see that it's trying to match up against zones one and two and a ground shot. Well, remember, there are no zones. So I'm gonna have to double click or right click on that one and I'm gonna pick locked. Now I'm gonna uncheck the zones. I'm gonna double click on it again to relock it. So now if I don't do that step, what happens is, is that I would not get any points in this group that I'm gonna build. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick on GDMRD chains, hold my shift key, pick on points. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say create the groups. All right. Now I'm gonna verify the chains. I've got data in there and I'm gonna verify the points and I've got data in there. Again, if I had not unchecked those zones under the points, then I would not have anything in here. All right, now, I need to take this data and save it, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save it as another XML file, which I'm gonna bring into a survey database. So it's gonna take the name of the file that I brought in and add to the end of it grouped. So I'm gonna pick on it, hit save, replace it if it exists, and I'm gonna close this out, and I'm not gonna save any changes to the setting file. So now I've gone through and I've grouped up the data correctly so that when I bring it into my survey database, things will be grouped correctly, then I can move that data into the drawing. All right, so let's go over here to my survey tab, okay? Now, in the survey tab, if I right click on survey databases and I set the working folder, all I'm doing is, is I'm saying, where do I wanna store my survey database? So I go down to my project, and I zip down to the survey database, and that's where I'm gonna tell it to store that survey database. Now, I've already made that survey database, and all I did was, was right click and say, create a new, new local survey database, okay? So I've already got that built for us. The other thing that I did is I right click, and I'm gonna open it for editing. I'm gonna right click it on again, and I'm gonna pick edit survey database settings, and I've already gone through and I've set up the coordinate system for the survey database, and I also went to the bottom of the list and I made sure that the extended properties were turned on. Both of those are set to yes, because there are some extended properties that I can get to inside of Civil 3D, but if these boxes aren't checked, I can't get to those properties. So always make sure that those two boxes are checked, okay? So I hit okay. So now I'm ready to load the data in to here. So I have a number of different ways that I can do it. I can right click on the survey database, go to import and say import survey data. I can go to import events and right click and say import survey data. I can go to the insert tab on the ribbon in the import panel and I can pick import survey data. All three of them get me to the same place. So the first question it asks me, it says select an existing survey database. All right, well, we only have one, so I'm just gonna pick on it. If I didn't have one, I could create it here and I could edit the database settings, but I don't need to do that, so I'm gonna hit next. Well, it's asked me what type of file. Well, I've got four types of files, fill books, land XML, point files, points from a drawing. I'm gonna use the land XML file. Now I pick on the folder button here and I go to my Casey folder 
and I'm going to pick on that file that I just created, this grouped file. I'm going to hit open. I'm going to hit next. Now, I'm going to take my scroll bar, push it up, and I'm going to double check a couple of things. I'm going to make sure the current figure prefix database is set to FDOT. All right, that's part of what comes with the state kit, so that's set correctly. All right, I don't want it to process any line work, so I'll make sure that's not checked. And then all these down through here, assign offset points, insert network, figure objects, insert survey points. I want to make sure all those are unchecked as well, because I just want the data to come into the survey database. Okay. Then I slide down the list. And the other thing that I'm going to do here is I don't really need to do it in this example, but I'm a creature of habit is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to set the coordinate system to FL83 NF. So I'm just telling the software that this is the coordinate system that the data is coming in from. Okay. If it was different than what the coordinate system of the survey database was, then it would do a coordinate transformation for us. All right. Got it. Hit finish. So what I have now is I have some figure groups and I have some survey point groups. So now I have data that came from the KC project. I've run it through the WAN XML grouper. I've re I've brought created two groups. All right. I then brought that into the survey database. All right. So the next step is now is to start moving the data from the survey database into the drawing. Now, why did I use the SurfRD drawing? This is the drawing that we use for work in progress. This is where we build surfaces, where we can edit surfaces. Then this is where we push that surface data out to create our GTM, GDTM RD file. Okay. So let's now there's if you've seen me do some of the surveying surveying webinars, uh, I'm going to do the process a little bit differently today than I normally do for a couple of reasons. One, to show you that you can do it differently and also give you access to some, some tools that I haven't showed you in the past. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to pick on my survey point groups. I want to right click and I'm going to say insert those into the drawing. So now if I go to the prospector tab and I expand out my point groups, you'll see now that this is the point group that came in from the survey database. You also notice that next to no display, that point group has got the golden shield. The reason is, is that in this template, there are two point groups, all points and a point group pre-built called no display. Because I brought in these points, it added them to the point group, I have to update that point group to accept the information that's been brought in. So I just right click, hit update, and everything is good. All right? Now, in this point group, you know, when the data came in, the software was preset to know what point style to use and what point label style to use. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to save my drawing. All right, now let's go back to the survey. All right, well, before we do that, let's talk about a couple of things. So I've got data in here, but I don't have a surface yet. Okay, so because I'm going to use this data to build a surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm in my prospector tab, I'm going to go to surfaces. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say create a surface. And I'm going to give this surface a name. Okay. And I'm going to tell it that when it starts displaying data that I brought into the surface, I want to do it as triangles one to one existing green. If I wanted to change a different style, this is a style that's part of the template, I would just pick on it, hit OK. All right. So here's the name of the surface. I hit OK. All right. Now, I don't have any, the data is in the drawing, but the data has not been associated to the surface. So what we're going to do is, is we're now going to look at that surface, the state road 57 existing, expand definition, and we're going to go down and we're going to pick on point groups, and we're going to right click, and we're going to say add. And the point group that we're going to add is the point group that came in from the survey database. I'm going to hit apply, hit OK. And because I've already got the style set up in the surface, the data is added to the surface now, and it now displays the surface for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and save the file. Now, the next process that I'm going to do is, is remember, I've got some break line data. So I'm going to go back to the survey database. I'm going to go up here to my GD TMRD chains. I'm going to right click. Now, I've got a couple ways that I can handle this. In the past, what I've done is I've said create, picked on create break lines, and it says what surface do you want to associate them to, right? And then I hit OK. This time, I'm just going to right click, and I'm going to insert those into the drawing. 
So now you can see if I zoom in here, you can see now that I've got my break lines in here. All right, so if I hover over those, those are my survey figures, okay? All right, but they're not actually break lines yet, they're just survey figures. Now, what we're gonna do today that's different than in the past is that we're gonna go to the Prospector tab, okay? We're gonna go over here to break lines, we're gonna right click and we're gonna say add. And again, we're gonna call these, we're gonna give it a name, And it's going to be called break lines. All right, now there are different types of break lines that we can add. Now these lines that are coming from the survey database, the survey figures, they have elevations at the vertices, so they're going to be a standard break line. If I needed to add a break line, I could do what's called a proximity by just simply drawing a plain 2D polyline, and the software would take that line on the surface and it would find the closest vertice, and that would make it where the, the break line would track across. Okay, If I'm doing vertical faces, I could do a wall break line. We're just going to do standard. We're going to hit OK. All right. It says select objects. I'm just going to do a window. Hit enter. It found 165. Uh-oh. My event viewer popped up, and it's telling me that there's a break line that was not added because it crossed at a particular location. Okay. So let's clear out the action viewer. All right. And let's take a look at what's going on here. Now, I want to select my surface, and there's a number of ways that I can select the surface. One way is I can go over here to the Prospector tab, select on the surface, right-click, and I can say Select. Okay. Or I can select the surface on the screen here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. I select my surface. Now, when I do that, either from the Prospector or from the ribbon, it gives me some options up here. So we get a new tab with a 10 surface and the name of the surface. Now, I'm going to go to the Analyze tab, and this is the first time I've showed this before, and I'm going to pick on Resolve Cross Break Lines. And it says, okay, specify the type of break lines you want to find. Well, I'm going to do Figure. Now, what it does is it opens up this panoramic viewer, gives me the crossing break line, and it says, okay, here's the two break lines that it's found, okay, and here's the elevation difference between them, okay. So if I pick on this line right here, it highlights everything. Because the auto zoom is turned on, it automatically zooms me into the area where the issue is, and it shows me where the crossing break lines are, okay, right in here, okay. Now, crossing resolution, I've got four options, higher elevation, lower elevation, okay, use average elevation, or specify the elevation. All right. Normally, I believe with the DOT standards, I believe we've been using in the past the average elevation. But for this example, just so you can see, I'm going to say use lower elevation, which is it shows you what it is. And to actually resolve this, you simply pick on the resolve button. And you can see now that the issue has been removed and everything is cleaned up and that break line issue has been fixed. All right. Now, another way that we could have fix that is, is that if we go to the surface and right click onto its surface properties, and we go to the definition, we expand out build, we can go down here and say allow crossing break lines, and we could set that to yes, and then we could just say use last break line elevation. Hit apply, rebuild the surface, all right, and pretty much tells us what's going on. Hit okay to close that and close that out. So you could set your template up to automatically default to that, or you could fix the break lines as they go. Now you can see now on that example, when I did that, I need to go over here and rebuild my surface. All right? So now it, it basically tells us here's the information of what actually happened because of that setting that we just said to use crossing break lines. So I want to clear the events. All right, now before we go any, we go any further, is that I still see that I have an issue going here from the data that's collecting out in the field. So if I hover over this, you can see that it's a survey figure and it's a driveway. Well, I don't remember collecting in anything out in the field that looked like that, so I've got a problem. So I'm gonna pick on that survey figure, okay? My tab goes to figure. I go to the modify panel and I pick on survey figure properties. Now it brings up this figure properties dialog. Now I'm gonna go down and pick on the very first name and you can see that get a little glyph and as i pick on those names it shows me what i'm editing now what i can see here is that somehow the geometry got miscoded it's coded as a curve 
I need it to be a point. So I'm just going to walk through and change these to points. All right, I'm going to apply, and I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to hit Escape. And so now I've updated that survey figure. All right, now I'm going to go back over here to my prospector. You'll see my surface is out of date again because I added a survey figure that we're using as a break line. So I'm going to go ahead and rebuild it again. Okay. All right, now you can see that it's starting to clean up, but I've still got a little problem right here. Got another survey figure. Let's see if I can find it here. There it is. Okay, I'm going to edit that one. And this one here, I've just got one piece of geometry that was miscoded, and I'm going to change it to a point. Hit apply, hit OK, go to the prospector tab, and now I'm going to rebuild the surface again. All right, so there we go. So I'm going to zoom out and save my file. So you can see that I'm doing a combination of edits. You know, I let the software resolve the crossing brake line for me. I then went back and turned the switch on. Then, so if I brought any more brake lines across, that it would know what to do. All right. Then I went back and I edited the survey figures. Now, when I edited the survey figure, it edited it in the drawing graphically, but it also sent those edits back to the survey database. So if I bring this data into a different file and build a different surface using the same data, then the edits would already be there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select on my surface and I'm going to go up here to my object viewer and we all know the rule. Whenever you run the object viewer, you want to save your file before. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate around and what I'm looking for is maybe some Christmas trees or some pits where I maybe have a bad shot. Don't have any problems there. But here's where I've got a problem. For some reason right here, I've got a hole where there's no data. So uh, we need to kind of look and see what's going on here. What's causing the problem? Let's go over here and go to the surface properties. And let's look at the definition. Now, in the build operations, there's an, a definition called maximum tri triangle length. And it's turned on and it's been set to yes. And so they've set the maximum triangle length to 100. And if you look down here in the corners, you can see that what the software is doing is it says, OK, do not display any triangles that have a length, line length of 100 or greater. Okay? But I think the problem in here is, is that possibly the way the data is trying to triangulate is I need to maybe enlarge that length. So I'm going to set it to 300. Hit apply rebuild the surface, and look at that. It closed up that piece of information. So it fixed the problem. Now, by fixing the problem, all right, let's select it, let's go to the object viewer. You'll see now that there's no longer a hole in that surface. All right. Now, but by fixing it, it caused some other problems. So what I now have is, is I've got the software is trying to triangulate between these two points and we don't need this information so by enlarging the length of the line from 100 to 200 it also is going to allow it to draw lines in that are longer than that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select on the surface i'm going to go to the modify tab and i'm going to go to edit surface and i'm going to go to this command here called delete a line now deleting a line has asked me to select edges so i could just do like a crossing window and pick them but that is kind of hard for me to do when I start getting down in these little radiuses here. So what I'm going to do with the command prompt is I'm going to type in a selection option called fence. So I type in the letter F. Okay. And then what I do is I will start, I will go in, then I will come back out, I'll hit enter, and hit enter again. And now it goes in and deletes the lines that I don't I don't I no longer need. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay. Again, hit F for fence. Start here. Go here, come out, hit enter, and I'm going to clean them up. So this is a way that we can go in and we can start editing data, you know, that we don't need in our surface. Okay. So we hit this and we're going to save the file again. Now, let's go back over here and let's look at the surface properties. And under the definition tab, under the operation types, you can see that the software will keep track of any of these editing operations. This is kind of like an undo file, but it's a permanent undo file, okay? So if I go over here and I uncheck delete multiple lines and I hit apply and I rebuild the surface, 
you'll see that this information comes back. So I can do a little bit of what if editing to see how it affects the surface. All right, if I want to bring it back, I can pick on it and I can hit apply, rebuild the surface, and it puts it back. All right, I'm going to hit OK here. Now, let's go in here and let's hover in this area right here. And most of the time, I can get it to show me what the actual elevation is right there. But I'm going to hover around. It's going to want 203 here. All right, it's 205 here. Now, what I want to do is, is I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to select on my surface. I'm going to go to Edit Surface, and I'm going to say that I want to add a point, okay? Because I didn't collect enough information out in the field. Maybe I need to add another point in here. So I pick on it, and I'm going to go in here, and it's going to tell me, all right, the elevation right there is at 204. I'm going to type in 205, all right? And I'm going to hit Enter. So now you can see, as soon as I add that additional point geometry, Okay, it automatically updates the surface and it retriangulates. Okay, now let's say that I didn't put the point in the right place, so I can go up here under Edit Surface and I can go down and pick on Modify Point. All right, maybe I want to change elevation or maybe I just want to move the point. Okay, and this says specify the point to move. Okay, new location, and you can see it moves it. All right, let's say that instead of moving it, I want to modify the point. When we do that, the software says nope can't do that, you must have surface points displayed for this operation to be able to be done. So what that's telling this is, is we have to go into the surface style. So we go to the information tab, we select here, we see edit current selection, we go to the display tab, and all we do is we turn our points on. Now I'm going to do an override so that you can actually see the color of those points. Hit apply, hit OK, hit apply, Hit OK, and now you can see that software now displays the points. Now, here's an important thing to remember. We are editing the points that are made up on the triangulation on the surface. If this has been an actual civil 3D point that we'd use to create the surface, we're not moving that. We're moving the points that are the triangulation points. So now I'm going to go up here and edit surface, and I'm going to say I want to modify the point. I'm going to pick on the point, hit Enter, and now I'm going to change it to 204 and I can change the elevation. So you can see that there are some rules that we have to go through to uh, when we're working and modifying and editing points, okay? All right, now let's go one more time over to here to surface, okay? And I'm gonna go to the definition, and you can see now that I have these two definitions in here. Well, I've decided that I don't need those two points. So I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna say uh, remove from definition. Let's do two things. I'm going to first apply and rebuild the surface. Okay. And now I want to pick on the two again and right click and say remove from definition and hit OK. And I've got one more here that I want to get rid of. And there we go. So you can see that this running operation list uh, remains. When I save the file and I come back into it an hour later, this afternoon, tomorrow, two weeks from now, those definitions will be there. So I can always go back and I can ch change things. Now, the last process that I want to do here is, is I, I'm done editing my surface. One of the things that we have to do here, I'm going to save my file, and I'm going to go out here and I'm going to export to a land XML file. So here's my surface. Here's my surface I'm going to export. All right, I'm going to put it in my survey folder, and I'm going to give it the name Sure, I'm in the right project here, which I'm not. And here's the name of the file that I want to use. Okay, so now I'm done with this file. I've done all my editing that I want to do in the file. So I'm very quickly going to go up and I'm going to create another file. This time it's going to be a digital train model file. I'm going to set my coordinate system. I'm going to create and open the file. Right, my next step is, is to associate this drawing. And then I'm going to go to the Insert tab and import that Land XML file that I just brought in or just created. And there's the surface name. Okay. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the surface style to triangles one to one existing green. And I'm going to save my drawing. For this surface to be available for other members of my team, I need to create a data shortcut. So I've got all my pathing set up. 
So I'm just going to right click, say create data shortcuts. I'm going to pick on surfaces, hit OK. And now that surface that I just brought in from Casey through the grouper into the survey database, brought it into the drawing, did my editing, pushed out as a land XML file, brought it in to create, inserted that into the GDTMRD file, and now I've exported it out as a data shortcut. So that's the process that we, we would use when we, work, when we are working with KC data. Okay, so let's close this out real quick. Before I go to the next project, I'm going to set the data shortcuts project folder path to the 220495 project. I'm gonna go up here to FDOT, create a file, all right. Again, I'm gonna make sure that I have the right project selected. Again, I'm going to create a survey development model. Now in this folder, I already have an SRV RD01, so it's gonna to default to two. Again, I'm gonna set the template. I'm gonna do a create open file, close, right click on my data shortcuts and associate this drawing to the project. That's correct. So now I've got my container where I wanna bring the data in. Now what I have to do is, is I've gotta go down to my toolbox. And in my toolbox, I'm gonna expand out my Autodesk Civil 3 and Engineering Data Translator, and I'm gonna pick on the Import Geopack Project Data. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say Execute. So now, first thing it says, it asks me to log in. And again, if you don't have an account, here's where you go to, to create one. Type in my password. Remember I said that this was an old MicroStation project. And in here, we had a TIN file available to us. So this is what I'm gonna use. It could have either been a TIN file or it could be a GPK file. So we're just gonna pick on this TIN file that's in the survey folder under a folder that I created called data translation. So I'm gonna hit open. It says, what are my units? Well, I'm gonna type in I for Imperial. All right, now it says, what do you wanna bring in? Well, I wanna bring in just the contours and the triangles. So I hit okay. And now it's pushing it to the cloud. All right, so it'll take about 15 to 20 seconds or so to push this up. Now, once it's up in the cloud, you don't really know what's going on because it gives you no indication on the screen. What I need to do here is, is I have to go down and I have to open up this tool called the job monitor. So I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna pick execute. And so what it's showing me here is any prior jobs that I pushed to the cloud and if the one that I just pushed, it says it's currently in progress. Now, if I wanna remove any job from the list, I can just simply highlight the job, pick the red X and it's removed from the list. So you see the process of what you have to do. You have to wait for it to come back to say complete. When it's completed, it will then say download, okay? Now here's what happens when you do a download. All right, I'm gonna to go to this project. I'm gonna to go to survey. And what I've done is I've downloaded the data. So what it does is it gives me three pieces of data. It gives me a, an AutoCAD drawing file called GDTMRD01. I don't wanna use this file because this doesn't have the FDOT styles in it. All right, it gives me a spreadsheet that I can open up and it will tell me, all right, add a geopack. All right, here's the name of the surface, the triangles in the area. In Civil 3D, here's what it's called it. Here's the numbers and triangles. And is there any difference? It just gives me a quick read on was the translation, you know, did it work? Was there any issues? So we look, that looks good. Now, here's an XML file. This is what I want to use. So let's go ahead and minimize this here. All right. Now, I've already got the data there. So that's the process of what you have to do. You have to select a 10 file or select a GPK file, answer a couple questions, push it to the cloud, wait till it's done, download the data, and now we go to the next step. Now, the next step is a little different than the KC data. The data is not going into the survey database. The data is gonna be brought directly into the drawing file. And I don't need to pre-build a surface. So all I do is I go to insert. I'm gonna say import a land XML file from the import panel. I'm gonna to go to my survey folder, go to engineering data. Here's the file that I'm bringing in. I'm gonna hit okay. All right, it gives me an information that's saying not all faces have neighbors, that's okay. Clear the events, close that out. Now under surfaces, here's my new surface. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and go to surface properties 
and I'm going to rename my surface, and I'm going to rename my surface SR61 existing. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to change the style to existing green. Hit apply, hit OK. Now, a couple of things that I might do before I get out of here, I might go to the statistics and expand out these three things, general, extended, and 10. The general tells me, you know, a minimum and maximum elevation. So if I know anything about the project, I can tell very quickly if I've got a blown shot or I got an issue, all right? The 10 tells me the maximum triangle length. Okay, so the maximum triangle length is about 188. Okay, so it looks like in this one, I don't have that use maximum triangle length set to something. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. Now, this file's in pretty good shape. So I don't really need to do any editing to it. If I pick on it and I go to the object viewer real quick, you can see that I don't have any spikes, I don't have any pits. So everything looks pretty good. So let's save the file, let's right click, and let's export it out. And what I need to do here is this is going to be my survey folder. And what I normally do is I will give it the name of the drawing, the name of the surface, and if it's an existing or final or whatever I've got it named. And this is the convention that I use. So I'm going to hit save, say yes. I'm done with this file. You can see 100% compliance, which is always a good thing. All right, FDOT, create the file, create my 3D model, set the coordinate system, close this, associate the drawing to the project, insert land XML, and here's the XML file that I just pushed out from the surfar D02 file. Actually, that's okay. Should have named it too, but that's all right. And the last thing that I'm gonna do here is, is I'm gonna change the style. Okay, so I'm gonna do existing green, apply and okay. All right, save my drawing. Now, and I don't know how I did what I just did. Guess I didn't hit something correctly. Apply, okay, there we go. Save my file. Now, the last process is would, would be to right click here and create the data shortcuts. Now, to speed things up, I've already got my data shortcuts set up for both my existing file and also my surface file, okay, that I created a data shortcut from. And I did, it was the exact same process that I had to run it through the data translator, push it out, bring it down, create, you know, the files. The only difference was that on this file, instead of using the surfrd file, what I had to do was this. And so I guess I probably should show that to you. So I go to FDOT, I go to create the file. This time I'm working in the roadway because this is a final surface. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna pick on proposed design. Close. Right click, associate the project to the current drawing. And then back to the same process, insert. This time I go to the roadway folder and I'm gonna pick on that XML file and I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna clear all the events out and close it. And now I have in this file, my surface file, right click on it, surface properties, and I'm gonna change this to triangles existing or proposed blue, okay? And again, same process I did before, I would probably go in and do some editing and remove some of these, delete some of these lines, okay, both up here and down here around these intersections. Once I'm done with that, then I would do the same thing. I'd export this surface out. Uh, well, actually, I've got it cleaned up. I would then go out and create a data shortcut for this surface, which would be showing up down here. So again, it's the same exact workflow, except we're working on a final surface instead of an existing surface. So I'm gonna be doing it in my design template instead of my SurfRD template, because this is a design process versus a surveying process. So now I've got all this pushed out, everything's ready to go. My data shortcuts are set up, so I'm gonna close this file. And I'll close this file. All right, now I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go into my drainage folder and I'm gonna open up 
this drainage design file. And this is the file that you saw Brian working with last week. Okay, so this file has our existing surface, it has our final surface, it has a pond that we've built and created a surface from, and it also has the grading that Brian did last week, this area right into here. Now, before I get started in this process, I don't need to see all my surfaces. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to surfaces and I'm gonna pick on the surface collection. And I'm gonna go down and pick on drainage pond and hold my shift key down and pick on SR61 final. And then I'm gonna go over to the style column and I'm gonna right click on the style column name. And I'm gonna pick edit. And I'm gonna change this to no display. And I'm gonna hit okay. And so I was able to turn off the style properties of all four surfaces in one time, instead of going to each surface and right clicking and changing the surface style or picking on the surface, going to the ribbon and going to surface properties, okay? And changing it there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna create myself you know, a new surface. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna call this surface post development. And this one I'm gonna set up with a surface style of triangles one-to-one -one proposed purple. Hit okay, okay. Now, the process that I'm doing here now is, is I am going to paste all four surfaces into one surface. So what I do is, is I go to post development, I expand out the definition, I select on edits and I right click and here's all the editing tools that you saw from the uh, from the ribbon earlier. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna pick on paste to surface. And I'm just gonna do a window and select all four surfaces, hit okay, and there we go. I'm gonna save my drawing. So let's take a look at, do kind of a quick analysis of what I have here. So I've got my existing surface, I've got my final surface running down the road, I've got my pond. No, I don't have a pond. My pond's missing, and it appears that the grading is also missing. So what did we do wrong? Well, we didn't do anything wrong. What you do is, is you go to the post development surface and you right click and you go to surface properties. And you go down here under the definition tab and under your operation, here's those four paste operations. And you'll see that you've got these arrows and these are very similar to display order or if you've worked with point groups and you're using the no display point group and you wanna move things up or below that, you can move them up and down by picking on the arrows. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick on the two surfaces, the State Road 61 existing and the State Road existing final, and I'm gonna move them to the top of the list. As soon as I do that, you can see that my surfaces definitions is out of date. So I'm gonna hit apply. I'm gonna rebuild the surface. I'm gonna hit okay. And if I did my job right, there are my pond. And here's my grading. So let's take a quick look at this. Now remember, save your file, select the surface, either right click and pick object viewer, or go up here to the generals tool and pick object viewer. Now I'm gonna zoom in a bit, there you go. Now I can display it differently. I could do maybe shades of gray. I don't like that. I could do shade with edges. That gives me the triangles and, so it gives me an idea of where my triangles are. All right, it gives me a little color to it, but I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do shaded because that gives me a pretty good idea of what's going on in my project. So there's my pond, there's my grading, here's my existing surface, and here's my proposed row. So it looks pretty darn good. So that's kind of like a visual analysis. Well, what about some of the analysis tools that I have in Civil 3D? Let's take a quick look at that. Now let me just kind of grab some of these tables that we have in here, kind of move them out of the way. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to post development, go to surface properties. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to the information tab and under my surface style, I'm gonna look at a style that I might use for an analysis. Now I'm gonna pick the style elevation banding and that style is part of the template. I'm gonna go to the analysis and I'm gonna say, well, I'm gonna do from a list here, I'm gonna pick on elevations. I'm gonna create the ranges by a number of ranges, a range interval, or a range interval with a datum. For this example, I'm just gonna do number of ranges. And I'm gonna set the number of ranges at eight. Now, to get 
the analysis down to the range details, I have to pick on the button here that says run the analysis. Now, builds eight ranges for me. Now, the color scheme is scheme that's default when we run this command is set up for blue. I don't like that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick on each one of those ID lines, and I'm just going to click on it with my left mouse button, and I'm just going to walk through here and very quickly go through and associate a color with each range. So it doesn't take that long to do. And one more. I'm going to go ahead and pick on the preview button, and it will also show me what a table would look like that I can associate with this. So I've got apply. I hit OK. And now I have an analysis that's showing the elevation ranges of my surface. Well, a picture is worth a thousand words, but sometimes I need a table to explain what's going on. So I go to the annotate tab. I go to the labels and tables panel. I go to the add a surface legend table. Uh, it asks me to select the surface. I'm just going to hit my space bar or enter key. And from the list, I'm going to pick on post development. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to tell it that I want to do an elevation table. I want the table to be dynamic. And I pick on a spot. And there's my elevation table. That's one sort of analysis I can perform. Let's do one more. Let's save the file before we go any further. Let's go back to post development and surface properties and information. Now, what I want to do is I want to display this using some contours that are set up at two feet for major and a half a foot for minor. But in that style, I want to display something called slope arrows. So in order to perform my analysis, I have to have those slope arrows turned on in that style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new style on the fly by picking here and saying copy current selection. Go to the information tab, and I'm going to type in with slope arrows. Hit apply, and now you can see my name up here in the dialog box has changed. I go to the display tab, I use my slider, I slide down, and I say turn on the slope arrows. Hit apply, hit OK. That now becomes my style. I go back to the analysis. This time, I'm going to change the analysis to slope arrows. All right, I'm going to do eight. And this particular analysis is using the color scheme of rainbow. So I'm going to leave it that way. Do a quick preview of the label, of the table. Hit apply. Hit OK. Now if I zoom in, now you can see that I have slope rails showing the direction that the, the water may flow. Now to add another table, it's the same process. Add surface legend table from the annotate ta tab, labels and tables panel. Hit space bar, post development. Hit OK. This time I'm going to do a slope arrow table. Again, it's going to be dynamic. And there we go. So there's a table that's associated with my slope arrows. Now, the last thing that I want to show you here is I'm going to save the file, is that you know we have some other tools up here. So you know now I, I have an idea of the way things are going to flow. But if I just want to do a quick test, I could pick on the surface, and I could go up and pick on my water drop, and I could just I'll just leave the default values, and all I do is pick a point, and it's going to show me which way the water would flow. So you can see wherever I pick, it's, there's, these are just simple 2D polylines. So this is another way that we can perform an analysis, display a surface a different way, and then use different tools to see what's actually going on with the surface. So let me zoom out here, and let me save the file one last time. All right, let's jump back over to here. What do we cover today? FDO State Toolkit. We talked about using the FDOT Land XML Grouper tool. We talked about using the, Civil, the Autodesk Civil Engineering Data Translator tool. All right, the grouper tool, we worked with KC data. The data translator tool, we worked with some microstation. In this case, it was a TIN file, or we could have worked with a GPK file, okay, a GeoPack file. We looked at, you know, deleting points, modifying points, all right? We added, we deleted some lines, okay? The only thing I didn't show you was the swap an edge, and swapping an edge is that where you've got, sometimes you may have uh, contours running across uh, you're drawing and maybe a contour all of a sudden kicks out. Well, for some reason, when the software created the surface and it created the tin, the triangles, it 
flip pick the wrong edge and what you do is you just pick on a triangle edge and you flip it and it just goes across two other points and usually that will straighten up that issue uh, i showed you how to paste the surface uh, raise and lower surface we didn't really get to talk about you just pick on a surface and you can say i want to raise it by five feet or lower it by five feet uh, sometimes you might have two surfaces where you're doing a comparison between an existing surface and a proposed surface and if i raise it up five feet you want to know how much you know volume is going to change between the two surfaces that's where you would use that the simplify surface tool is something that we usually use when we're working with a lot of times point data point cloud data right or lidar data and you know it comes in with hundreds of thousands of points and maybe we want to go through and we want to filter you know like half of them out without you know degradating the the accuracy of the surface so that's a tool that we would use Thanks for attending today's webinar. Uh, you can always contact me at 850-261-2585 or email me at dmm at caddesk.com. So again, thank you for attending today's webinar.